so we are back with another story time session and this week we will continue the story of the churning of the ocean the milky ocean the samudra manthan last week we saw the first part of the story where we saw that in order to obtain the amrit the nectar of immortality the devas the gods as per the guidance of narayana approached the asuras or the demons and were able to broker uh, a truce in their war and to work together for the common good of obtaining this ambrosia the nectar of immortality and we saw that after a lot of uh, churning and other adventures the kalakuta the terrible poison was released from the ocean because of the churning and everybody was so afraid it was so terrible and then finally lord shiva when he was called upon by both the asuras and the devas to help them out to to save them he agreed to swallow the poison and hold it in his throat and it colored his throat blue and of course many more things happened for those who have not yet seen the story you can watch it it is available on my channel but now we will see how it continues so again we'll start with a small prayer a small invocation and then we will continue the story om shri guru bhyo namaha hari om om gurur brahma gurur vishnu gurur devo maheshwara गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः सदा शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्म श्री गुरुपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ नमा धन्वंतरी मादिदेव सुरासुरवंदित पाद पद्म लोके जरारुभयृत्युनाशम धातारमीशम विविधीना सो आफ्टर the terrible poison had been swallowed by lord shiva by mahadeva and kept in his throat when the poison was gone from the from the air the devas and the asuras the gods and the demons they continued the churning for a moment they had all been shocked but then they realized okay you know we are protected and it said they continued the churning even more enthusiastically and after a lot of effort a beautiful cow appeared came out of this of the ocean after all the churning came to the surface and that cow was called kamadhenu so the rishis who knew the vedas you no know, all the yagyas the vedic rites they thought that this cow will be very useful to help them you know prepare the offerings because they need uh, cow milk they need the ghee to offer in the yagyas and they said we would like to have this cow and then after the the cow kamadhenu had appeared a white beautiful white horse called uchchai shravas 
it appeared. It came out of that ocean. It was such a beautiful horse. So when he saw that horse, Bali, the king of the demons, he wanted that horse. He said, I want that horse. And Lord Indra, the king of the gods, he also thought it's a beautiful horse, but then he remembered that Lord Narayana had told him that if you want to be successful, whatever things that come out of the ocean before the, the nectar, before that ambrosia, the potion of immortality, whatever comes, don't try to keep it. If the, the demons, if they ask for it, if the asuras want it, just give it to them. Let them have it. Don't make an issue out of it. So Lord Inda, he didn't object. He was very kind. He said, okay, you can have the horse. And then out of the ocean, a great elephant, huge elephant arose. And it was so beautiful. It was also white. And it had four tusks. So that elephant, it was given to Indra. It was named Airavata. Because the horse was already taken by Bali, so he said, okay, then now you can have this elephant. So the elephant went to Indra. Then after that, a beautiful gem, a precious stone appeared with the name of Kaustubha. And it was... Uh, reddish, like pinkish red, like the lotus in color. And then before anybody could say that, oh, I would like to have this, or everybody was surprised because Lord Narayana himself, he said, you know, I would like to wear this gem. It looks very beautiful. I want to wear it as an ornament. So everybody was surprised that how come suddenly Lord Narayana himself wants something. But they said, okay, you can have it. You can have the gem. So he took the, the beautiful gem called Kaustuba. And after that, a tree appeared by the name of Parijata. A beautiful tree. And after the tree, like in when it appeared, after that, a whole a group of beautiful women also appeared along with that who were wearing beautiful ornaments of gold and they were wearing beautiful dresses and even their, the way they walked, the way they moved was very beautiful and very attractive. And the devas thought they were looking so nice. So these women were later known as the Apsaras. So the Devas, they said, we would like to take these ladies with us, take them to, to the Deva Loka, to the heaven. And the big tree, the Parijata tree, it was given to Indra, along with all these damsels. And the only reason the, the devas, they took these, because the asuras were not interested. The demons, they said, oh, you know, we don't care about these things. So if you want, you take it. So then Indra said, okay, I will take it. They said, we don't need this tree and all these ladies and all that. So Indra said, okay, I will take them with me. And then suddenly, after that, such brightness it was said it was almost like uh, like lightning so bright there appeared a beautiful woman and that was lakshmi now lakshmi was so beautiful and so attractive that everybody wanted her nobody could keep their eyes away from her so it said indra he dropped the rope and he got a throne and he placed a throne for her to sit so that she didn't have to stand. And then it said that all the divine rivers, they took forms and they brought her water. 
in pots of gold, golden pots. They brought this water from all the holy rivers. The rivers themselves, they came and offered that to her. And then it said that the Mother Earth, she brought all her precious herbs to, for her to bathe so that she could take a bath. And it said the cows, they, they gave milk for her. They yielded the milk. And Vasanta, who was the, the god of, of spring, it said he brought her beautiful flowers, which only bloom in the spring months. These months are called Chaitra and Vaishaka. So there's some beautiful flowers that only bloom at that time of the year. So the god of spring himself brought her those flowers. And it said the rishis, they gave her the holy bath, the Gandharvas, the celestial beings that make such beautiful music. They sang her praises and all the Gandharva women, they danced around her to make her happy. And it said the clouds, they, they rained very beautiful, like a drizzle on her. And the, the elephants, it's called the Digajas, the elephants which are in charge of the different quarters, the different directions. It said they brought water in their trunks and they poured it on her. Like sometimes we see, you know, the pictures of Lakshmi, where they have, you see elephants who pour water on her with the trunks. It said the Lord of the oceans, he brought her pure white silks to wear and the God of uh, the, you know, the, the wind also, Varuna, also brought her a garland. Varuna, not the wind, like the, the oceans and he brought her a beautiful garland which was smelling so beautiful, they say. It had such wonderful flowers that there were bees humming around it all the time. So in the ancient scriptures, they say the sound of the, the honey bee is very pleasing. So don't think that it is scary that, okay, you have to wear a garland and it has all these bees. No, it said that sound is very pleasant. And then Vishwakarma, who was the divine architect, it said he brought her beautiful jewelry to wear and Saraswati came the goddess of learning of knowledge Lord Brahma's uh, wife and it said she gave her a necklace made of pearls and then her husband Brahma came who gave a beautiful lotus and the Nagas the celestial beings they gave her earrings and she had a garland of lotuses in her hands and it is said that she was walking between all of them with a beautiful smile on her lips and a little bit like, you know, like that shyness. So everybody could not keep their eyes off her. And with this shy smile on her lips, she was walking around as if looking for a husband, like, seeing who she will choose because she had just appeared. You know? So it said all the Yakshas, the Gandharvas, all the Siddhas, the Devas, all of them were there. The Asuras also, the demons. But it said she was walking in between them but she did not choose anybody as if she was not pleased with any one of them in the sense that she would want them to be her husband. So then the Rishis who were also present, they thought that, you know, maybe uh, we have a chance. But then it is said that she was thinking that, okay, even though these Rishis have done so much of tapas, they have that wealth of, of penance, of all the spiritual practices, but they have not yet conquered anger. And... Then she was looking at the devas and the asuras and, you know, like, for example, Brahaspati, the guru of the devas and Shukra, who was the acharya or the guru of the asuras. She thought, you know, yeah, they have a lot of wisdom, but then it is said that they don't have the, they don't know the meaning of detachment. So they also didn't qualify. 
Then she looked at the moon, Chandra, and said, oh, well, he is very young, he is handsome also. But then she realized he has not conquered lust, so he also did not qualify. And then the king of the gods, Indra, then she looked at him, but then she thought, no, even though he is the lord of all the heavens, but he has not conquered desire. So each one of them, they had something, there was something wrong, you know, something was not perfect. And she kept looking until finally her eyes found Lord Narayana. And she realized nobody is perfect except him. Because he is complete in himself. The only thing was Lord Narayana and she knew that. He was the only one who was not looking at her with that desire. Because he is so complete in himself that there was no desire for her also. So it is said that she looked at Lord Narayana who was beyond the three gunas, rajas, sattva, tamas and who was not affected by craving and aversion, by desire, by passion like the others. And it said, you know, he was like a lake which was, uh, you know, like when a lake is totally flat, the water is totally still, there is no breeze also, there are no waves. So they said that when she looked at him, she got this feeling that, oh, he's like a, a lake which is totally unperturbed. And it said that she walked up to him and the lotus garland which she had in her hand, she placed it around his neck to indicate that this is the person that she had chosen to be her, her companion or her husband. And then she quietly stood by his side. And because she herself had chosen, nobody could object. And because Narayana himself had not asked for her, nobody could object. And it is said that then the Lord, he took her up and he placed her on his chest. And they said it was so beautiful because she was so bright and Lord Narayana was blue in color, like dark blue. So... Uh, in the scriptures they say it was like a, a streak of lightning uh, that glows in front of a dark thunder cloud. So it is very beautiful. And after that, of course, everybody realized that, okay, you know, she has chosen. So then they got back to their rope, poor Vasuki, <laughs> and they continued the churning. And when they continued the churning, it is said that another beautiful figure appeared, a young girl, and her eyes were like lotuses. And it said her name was Varuni, the most, uh, what do you say, pleasing. It's a, uh, it's a, a drink actually, no? it's also an a intoxicating drink. And it is said that the Asuras, they took her. They said, okay, we would like to have her. And she was given to the asuras. And then, after that, when the churning continued and continued, suddenly, from the depth of the ocean rose up a beautiful, divine-looking person. And it is said that he was dark in color and his arms were very long and, and very strong, very powerful. And he looked like a young man and he had a garland around his neck. And he said even his chest was very big, very strong. And he was wearing many beautiful ornaments, golden uh, jewelry with precious stones in it. And his dress, they say, was a, like a yellow silk. And in his strong arms, he carried a huge pot made of gold and he was Lord Dhanvantari. Lord Dhanvantari is considered as an incarnation of Narayana himself and when they saw him, both the Devas and the Asuras, the demons and the gods, they realized that their effort had been successful. 
because the vessel, the big pot of gold that Dhanvantri was holding, it held the Amrita, the nectar of immortality. So it is said that the moment they realized that the Asuras, they quickly dropped Vasuki, they dropped the, the snake, which they were using as a rope. And in a hurry, they rushed towards Danvantri because they wanted to have that pot. And it is said that they snatched that vessel from his hands and they ran away from there. Because they are demons. So obviously, their intention was to keep the nectar of immortality for themselves. They didn't want to give it to the gods because the gods were their enemies. If the gods became immortal, then the war will become very difficult if they cannot die. So they snatched that pot and they ran. Now the devas, even though they had also done it with the intention of getting that amrita, but they were shocked. Because they didn't expect this. So before they realized what had happened, the asuras had taken off with the nectar of immortality. Now what to do? So they didn't have any choice. They, they went to Narayana and they fell at his feet and they said, you know, please help us. You know, what can we do? They have taken our immortality. So it said Narayana smiled and he said, don't worry. I had already assured you that I will make sure that only you will get the nectar of immortality, not the asuras. And Narayana stood there and while he said it, he was looking in the distance, he saw the, the Asuras do all those things. And see, the Asuras, they were demons. They are not as sattvic, you can say, as, as maybe the gods would be. So he saw that already there was a big fight amongst the demons, amongst the Asuras, about who would get to taste it first. See, in Asuras, that ego is so strong. So they all wanted to be the first to taste it. And some of the Asuras were very, very dangerous and very powerful. So then, few of them, it is said, few of the Asuras, they were, uh, you can say, the, the better ones who were righteous, who were still honorable, so they, op they objected. They said, listen, you know, the churning of the ocean that we did, it was performed like a yajna. You know? A yajna means where everybody comes together for the greater good. So we took this, we undertook this task, this effort, with the he help of the devas. So as per the rules of the yajna, they should also get a part of this nectar. You know, we cannot just steal it from them. That would be going against the nature, you know, that is, and going against what is right. But there are only a few of them who felt this way, who shared this opinion. So the rest of them just didn't listen to them. <laughs> they just ignored. So all of them were fighting for this Amrita around this pot of gold. And, you know, it is said that, uh, while this argument was going on, they were taking the pot away from the deva. So they were going far away from the ocean. Now this fighting was going on, was going on, and suddenly all the asuras became quiet. The fighting stopped suddenly. Because suddenly they all turned and looked because they saw a beautiful woman was coming their way. And she was a woman like they had never seen before. So much of charm and so much of beauty. They had never in their whole existence had laid eyes upon something like that. They had seen beautiful women, but never that beautiful. It said her eyes were unlike anything they had ever seen. They were very dark blue like the heart of the blue lotus. 
And it is said that all her, her whole body was so perfect that they could not help it. They could only look at her. They forgot about all their fighting. And suddenly they all, they crowded around her and, you know, they were asking her questions that, you know, who are, please tell us who you are. You are so beautiful. Anything you ask, we will do for you. You know, they had gone, melted. They were like warm bee wax in her hands, you know. And they said, you know, we are, we are asuras, we are demons. We are the sons of Kashyapa. And we have this bowl of gold, which holds the nectar of immortality, the Amrita. And we are fighting over it because we couldn't decide who should taste it first. So you please take this. We leave the decision in, in your hands. You please decide who should get this first share of the nectar of immortality. We trust that you will make the right choice because you are a stranger. You are not one of us. So you are impartial. And you are the most beautiful, perfect woman we have ever seen. Please, you distribute it. They were all totally captivated by her. Now, what they did not know is that it was actually Lord Narayana himself who had assumed the form of this beautiful woman called Mohini for the benefit of the gods, the devas. So this was Narayana's illusion and he smiled very charmingly, they said, at all the deva, uh, all the asuras, at all the demons. And he said, oh, you brave sons of Kashyapa, how can you trust me? You don't even know me. You have only just met me. How come you have so much of confidence in me? I am just a woman and it seems that my appearance, my looks have pleased you. But he said the wise say that you should not just... Uh, you know, anybody who is sensible, who is wise, the wise men say should not have faith in a woman when she kindles lust in him. You know, because when that happens, the mind of the, of the man is, is not clear. So he said, when she is able, when a woman is able to captivate you like that, then you should not trust that. You, know, you should be careful what you do. So he told them, he said, no, the, the, the wise people say that when you trust a woman like that, just because she has captivated you with her beauty. He said, it's like trusting a wolf. It's very dangerous. But it is said that because what she spoke was the truth. And she was so dead honest. None of them believed her. You know, It's like someone who is saying so honestly that, you know, I am lying to you. Sometimes then you don't believe it. No, because you're being so honest. So they said that they laughed and still they gave her the vessel of gold, the pot of the nectar. They said, no, no, come on. We know that you will do the right thing. We trust you. Otherwise you wouldn't say it like that. No? It is like someone who is, who is a, a spy will never publicly announce that I am a spy. If they do, then you don't believe them because no spy in their right mind would actually do that. So they said they gave the pot of Amrita, of nectar to her and it said she took it in her hands and then she said, he said, I am ready to do this job for you. I am ready to help you out to, you know, do this task that you have asked of me, but only if you are prepared to accept my decision. Because if you want me to do this impartially, then whatever I do, whatever actions I take, whatever decisions I make, whether they are good or bad, meaning whether you like them or not, you need to accept them. Because I am doing you a favor and I don't want to get into trouble. So then later you cannot blame me. And they were all totally infatuated with her. They were totally in love, head over heels. 
love or lust or whatever it was. And looking at her, they just couldn't get enough of her. They said, yes, 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 whatever, whatever you say. We agree with that. Because their whole discrimination was gone. It said their intellect was gone. They were totally lost in her. So it is said that they spread the grass, the kusha grass, the sacred grass on the ground. And the asuras had their baths, their holy baths, after all that churning of the ocean. And then they dressed themselves very beautifully, wonderful clothes. And they stood on that grass. And by that time it said that the devas had also arrived because they were chasing them. And it said that the devas and the asuras, they were all standing there. They had all assembled. When Mohini entered with the pot of nectar of immortality in her hands. And it's beautifully described. They said her hips were covered with white silk. And as she walked, it swayed very, uh, you know, seductively. And the pearls on her neck were swaying through and fro uh, from her chest. So all the devas and the asuras, they were totally lost. Looking at her breasts, her hips, everything was totally captivating. And it said that they all sat there like, like people who were dumb, like fools, like idiots. They were all just sitting there looking at her. Now Narayana, who had come in the form of Mohini, he knew that it was not right to give that nectar of immortality to the asuras, to the demons. Because their nature was cruel. So, the example they give in the scriptures, they say it is like... Um, feeding milk to snakes because if you feed milk to snake they say that the poison in them becomes even stronger they become even more dangerous and he knew that for the world for the creation it would not be the right thing and that is why what he did is he made the two groups sit separately he made the devas all the gods sit on one side and all the asuras sit on the other side and then taking the vessel with the, the, the Amrita, it said he walked in between them. And then she would smile, she would glance, she would say sweet words to the Asuras. And while captivating them on the other side with her hand, she was serving the Amrita to the Devas. And it said because her, her presence was so captivating, it was like a magic spell that she had cast over the Asuras. So they didn't even realize that they were being cheated. That they were not, be, that they were not given their share of the Amrita. So because she was talking to them and distracting them, they didn't realize that in the meanwhile she was ser feeding, serving the Amrita to the gods. But then it said after some time, it was as if that, that captivation or that maya was becoming a little less. So some of them, they regained a little bit of their awareness, their consciousness. Something was dawning in their mind, but then it said that uh, they, they were still so in love with her and she was so beautiful that even though they realized what she was doing, they didn't feel that it was right or they didn't have the courage to, um, you know, to point it out or to object or to argue with her. They couldn't. She was so, so loving, so pleasing. They were totally gone. So then few of those asuras, they thought that, okay, you know, How come that this, these devas, these gods, don't appreciate this woman? She is so beautiful. And yet all these gods can think about is they want that Amrita. So they were like, what's wrong with these gods? Don't they see this woman, how beautiful she is, how amazing she is? 
How can they think only about this Amrita? So then they thought, okay, you know, maybe because she realizes that we are the only ones who really appreciate her. These devas don't know how to appreciate her. Maybe that is why she is giving them the Amrita first so that they can get lost. After that, surely she will give it to us also. Because she loves us. That's obvious, no? The way she talks to us, the way she looks at us. She loves us also. So she will never cheat us. That is what they thought. However, there was one Asura, one demon, who it said was very alert. And he realized what was happening. And he looked and he said, you know, this, I don't think she's going to give it to us. She's only giving it to the gods. And what he did is he quickly disguised himself as a deva, as a god. And it is said that he quietly sat in between the sun and the moon, Surya and Chandra. And his name was Swarbhanu, this demon. So it is said that he also held his hand out for the Amrita. And Mohini, she poured the Amrita in his hand and he quickly drank it. But that moment... Because he suddenly had appeared in between them. So he just put out his hand and quickly drank it. And then both the sun and the moon together, immediately they realized that this is not one of the devas. And they signaled, they gestured to Narayana in the form of Mohini that this guy is not a deva, he's an imposter. So it's said that that moment Lord Narayana summoned his Sudarshana Chakra and with it immediately he cut off the head of this demon. So he said he manifested his Sudarshan Chakra in the air that very moment and he cut off the head of the demon. Now it is said that some of the, because already some of the, the drops of that immortality, nectar, the Amrita, had already gone down the throat when this happened, but had not yet touched the lower body. So the moment the head was cut off, because it had already tasted the Amrita, it was immortal. And then the body fell down, but when the Amrita entered that body, that also became immortal. And it is said that the head became known as Rahu and the lower body became known as Ketu. So these are the two shadow planets, the Chayagrahas. And it is said that that is why uh, they became immortal and Lord Brahma honored them, to make them by making them part of the, the planets, the Navagrahas. So it is said that because they are demons and because they are so upset and angry with the sun and the moon, because because of the sun and the moon, he was cut in half, you know. Of course, you can say it was his own fault because he sneaked in. But it was because of the sun and the moon telling Narayana, pointing out that he was an imposter, that his head was cut off. And now it was living separately. The body was separate. The head was separate. So it is said that these two demons or these two parts of that one demon, they have a very intense hatred for the sun and the moon. And that is why they say that they always try to chase and swallow the sun and the moon. And this is what we know as the eclipses. So when this, the moon gets swallowed, it is a lunar eclipse. And when the sun gets swallowed, it is a solar eclipse. But the thing is because Rahu is only a head, he doesn't have a body. So after he swallows, it comes out from the other side. So that is why after the eclipse, 
for some time he will swallow and then again the sun and the moon it will appear the same is with k2 because it's only a body it doesn't have a head so it cannot you know fully eat it so it will swallow it for some time and again it will appear so these are the eclipses and then after the lord narayana he saw that all the devas had been given the amrita it said that he resumed his natural his true appearance he dropped the the deception or the illusion of his form of mohini and it's very interesting because it is said that uh, you know this story of the churning of the ocean has many many deeper meanings see one is that if you see the gods and the demons the devas the asuras they were working towards the same goal they wanted to become immortal they both put lot of effort and they were very sincere you know till the end so the efforts from both were equal and it is said that actually if you see even the asuras probably put in a little more effort because they are stronger they said no but even though that was the case why did the devas the gods got the benefit while all the efforts of the asuras had gone waste so one of the reasons they say is because the devas had surrendered themselves to the lord they had taken refuge in lord narayana and that is why they got the fruit of their action they got the result so it is said that even in the world when people put so much of effort but their main purpose is just to their end goal is to just benefit themselves or their children you know their own personal happiness it is said that it is like uh, watering the branches of a tree to make it grow see the branch of a tree will not absorb the water it's only the roots so it said when you dedicate your actions to the divine to lord to the lord then it is like watering the roots of the tree and then if you water the roots of the tree the tree will grow which means you will get the fruits also from the tree but if you water the branches it will not grow any fruits so this is one of the lessons where they say that in all your actions your intention and your approach makes all the difference you can put all the effort you want but if it is not with the right intention then the divine or the nature will not support and also you know all these stories they are symbolic so it said the devas are our positive qualities and the asuras are our negative tendencies or impressions or qualities so this churning of the ocean is happening all the time there is a continuous fight within you between the satvic aspects you know the the knowledge in you the kindness in you the compassion in you the friendliness the service uh the keenness to serve and your selfish qualities you know like sometimes if someone asks you can you help me with something but if you're more bothered about enjoying your own things that time you can say the asuras win but when someone needs your help or it's required and you're ready to put your own comforts or preferences or uh, things aside where you say no okay let me be useful or let me sacrifice a little of my time or my comfort or my energy or whatever it may be for the greater good then the devas are victorious and the only way to come to that amrita that immortality is like lord narayana said to not crave for any of those precious things that came up first of course the poison came shiva shiva took care of that because all of them surrendered to shiva 
and then all the beautiful things, the Lord said, don't crave for that. On the spiritual path also, you may get so many things. You may get uh, on the in the worldly plane, you may get a lot of respect from people or people may want to give you a lot of precious things like abundance or you get a lot of uh, influence in the society. So many things. A lot of followers or on the subtle level, you may get some yogic power, some siddhis, you know, special abilities. So he said, don't crave for any of those things. He also said, you don't take it at all. Like we saw, if the demons, the asuras didn't want it, then the devas, they took it. They said, okay, you give it to us. But there was no craving there. If it comes, okay. If, it's okay. if it comes, it's okay. You don't have to run away from it. But at the same time, not craving for it, not getting stuck with that. And these are just some of the points. I don't want to tell you everything. I cannot say also that I know everything. These stories have very profound meanings. But there are many things that you can take out of it. But it's nice for you also to think, to contemplate, to really see, okay, what could this story mean? All the different, there are so many uh, hidden meanings. So it's wonderful to think about these, these stories. Different things come up at different times. And of course, you're most welcome. You can... Uh, ask questions in the comments you can leave a comment or you can uh, share some of your uh, realizations or the things which you think you have figured out or that uh, have come to your mind when listening to this story or thinking about it you can share that in the comment as well we can all enjoy that we can discuss so i hope you enjoyed this story next week we'll have again a new story and Please feel free to share it with others, people that may enjoy it as well. And if you have not yet done so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And when you do, you can also click on the bell icon and select that you want to get the updates. So that whenever we have a new story session or we share a new video, you get a notification as well. So you don't have to miss it. And I hope everybody is doing well, taken care of in these challenging times. So lots of love and blessings. Namaste. Jai Gurudev. Om Shanti. Shanti. Shanti.